It was a perfect role reversal because my first year in law school, I was standing or sitting in the very back of the room, and Arthur Miller was standing up front. Right now, he's standing in the back, back benching, which is what I used to do uh, during his class, hoping to avoid that uh, deeply sonorous voice in which he would say to students, make a noise like a lawyer. And uh, not many of us could, certainly freshman year, for first year in, in, in law school, and uh, as a consequence professor, you scared me out of the profession into politics, where it's much easier to make noises that are less, uh, you, you, less scrutinized at a lower threshold of, uh, uh, for either logic, intellect, or factual foundation. But, uh, and now I'm in the journalism world, and you can draw your own conclusion. We have seen if not a U-turn, certainly a dramatic shift away from the policies that we thought we were electing several years ago. And so I don't mind that he went to the Chamber of Commerce, but the president went over there saying, now we are friends. He didn't go over to say to them, now here's how you must understand what we need to do as a nation. And, and I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. But, but it, it was disappointing that he bought the notion that business is an aggrieved party same business entities whom we have bailed out to the tune of trillions of dollars. And just so it's clear, we needed to do the bailout. I'm not one to attack TARP as being a bad idea or the bailouts of General Motors and Chrysler. We needed to do something. The transaction was a fundamentally flawed transaction. We'll get to that in a little bit as well, perhaps. We did not get anything back in return for it. Why has all of this happened? Why has it happened? Because very simply, they have, and I hate the word because it's been so overused, but they do have a narrative. They have a simplistic narrative. And it begins with the Marlboro Man. I don't mean cigarettes. But it begins with the imagery of the Marlboro Man, the sole entrepreneur on horseback riding off into the sunset, who individually, without support from anybody else, without support from a social structure, from government, from a community, from educational institutions, infrastructure, any of the things that we collectively have built, he by himself made America great. And that notion of individualism, which is, of course, part of what we believe in, but for them it is the entirety of the story. And because it is the entirety of the story, and it's glamorous, and it makes you feel good, and we like it as a story, and we should like it as a story, but if you confuse the story with reality, you get politics like what we've had over the last 30 years. And because we have been too cowardly, and I use that word advisedly, not in politics anymore, we have been too cowardly to stand up with an alternative vision, an alternative story, an alternative narrative, to use that awful word, we have let them dictate the terms of the story. I think we're simply afraid to explain what government should do. So in response to this, this Reagan-esque notion that government is the problem here, the big government is over, as, as Bill Clinton said, which is fine. You know, we, we don't need big, we need smart. We all understand those distinctions, and they're not just marketing distinctions. They are meaningful. But we need to, ex to explain to people what government must do. And if we don't create the affirmative argument, then we'll forever be playing defense, and nobody will ever stand up and say, yes, there's a reason to support it. Sunday, when the president, again, was being interviewed by Bill O'Reilly. And Bill O'Reilly said to him in an accusatory way, some people think you want to redistribute wealth. And instead of looking at Bill O'Reilly and, and saying, you know what? We've always believed in a progressive tax code. Because we've always believed that those who are wealthier can, in fact, afford to pay a little bit more. He embraced the predicate of the question embraced their narrative that anything that would in fact be redistributed to fund government was bad. And again, that shows the mindset. We let them set the terms of debate. We embrace their terms of debate, unwilling to establish an alternative narrative. Instead, he should have said, you know what? I want to raise marginal rates because the people who've seen their top income go up 300% can in fact afford to pay a bit more so we don't lay off teachers so we can build the infrastructure and pay for the R&D. But he didn't say that. The rule was only government can, can create integrity in the marketplace. If you believe in capitalism, which I'll take as a premise that all of us in this room do, and I certainly do, and I, I've said, and I've said this to a few of you, I used to tell the, the Wall Street folks who would come in to me and say, you, you really don't understand capitalism. I'd say, no, 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 you don't understand it. You're the one who wants both sides of the bargain. That's not how it works. I'm the one who believes in competition, fairness, integrity, and only government can make that a reality. gave us a little talk at the Federalist Society one time, and I was greeted with open arms, as you can imagine, and I said, I am making a prediction. Very shortly, when you see states actually using the power that you've said you want them to have, 
there's another word that will enter your lexicon. That word is preemption. <laughs> Suddenly you're going to flip everything on its head and say, you know what, we're not so sure we want states to be, to be doing this. We don't want the anarchy of 50 states regulating banks, my goodness, the mayhem, the Tower of Babel, the incoherence. We believe in coherent regulatory structures. And lo and behold, that's what happened. I want to talk for just a moment about the Constitution and tell you something that grieves me. I think we are about to lose the Constitution. I don't mean in some dramatic way that they're going to rip away from us, but I do mean just as we lost the conversation about what government should do, just as we lost the ability to speak with pride and vigor and define what a government can do for our communities because we failed to make a counterargument. We are losing the narrative about the Constitution because we are letting the other side claim it. The Constitution is a wildly progressive document. It is an amazing thing. We all appreciate that. I don't, I don't think I'm probably the least qualified person in the room to go on about that. But our failure to stand up and defend it permits them to claim it. This charade of reading an edited version of the Constitution on the floor of the Congress is though somehow the parts of it that we don't like didn't exist. As though somehow, therefore, they can both have an originalist interpretation but ignore the originalist pieces they don't like. I mean, the internal incoherence of what they do is so palpable. And yet we don't stand up and push back and say, shame on you. Stop. Read it. See that there are warts in this document. See that it has grown. See how wonderful it is. And understand it because it has a dynamic and has grown to show us where society can go. We're quiet. I would have loved to see the president push back on that in the State of the Union. I would have loved to see him say, I want to read the Constitution to you and explain to you what it means and how it grows. Where are we? When, we nom when our you know, folks we know are nominated for the bench, their testimony is painful. I would love to see somebody stand up and say, yes, I do believe the Constitution needs to be interpreted in a more creative way based upon what society is. Do you believe slaves should still exist? Who are we kidding? This is a document that reflects society, and I don't, I'm not a constitutional scholar, I never pretended to be, but it pains me that we are losing the Constitution because we are unwilling to stand up and defend what it really is. We have to do that. That's what this organization is about. Be happy, loud. Grab the loudest megaphone you can find and use it for that very purpose.